When you build your simple PIC executable, you're actually initiating a series of steps. The first one of which is this command or something very similar to it. So you're calling the XC32 GCC compiler. You want to produce debugging information, minus G, you can ignore that. This minus XC means that the input's going to be C code, ignore that. This minus C here, minus C means compile to object code. But don't link. So you're not creating an executable here. And the output file you're going to create is just simple pick.o. Simple pick.c is the C code that you're compiling. And the other interesting flag here is this minus m processor. And what this minus m processor flag is doing is it's telling our preprocessor that our particular model of PIC is 32MX795F512L. This is important because when we do that big include chain at the beginning of simple PIC, it needs to know which header file to put in there. And the header file is specific to your particular PIC. So it's by including this command in the compile, or sorry, this flag in the compile command that allows you to find the right header file. OK, so after this step, we've created the simple PIC object code. The next step looks something like this. So here we're going to create an output file, this minus O. The output file is called out.elf. We are, this is a linking command. Simple pick.o is the file that we're going to link. And again, we have this minus m processor flag. And here in the linking stage, so this is the compile stage. This down here is the linking stage. What's being done with this information, the uh, particular processor you're using, is it goes and finds the right processor.o file. And the processor.o file is the one that has the virtual memory addresses of every special function register for your PIC32. So now any reference that you had to Tris A, for example, at the linking stage gets resolved to the proper virtual memory address because of the inclusion of the right processor.o file, which we find by including this information to the link command. Uh, other things that are interesting here is this minus script nu32bootloaded.ld. This is a custom linker script that we created that tells the linker where to store your program in the PIC32's virtual memory. And the reason we do this is because we already have our bootloader sitting in boot flash. And so we don't want the, the linker to, by default, overwrite the bootloader that we've already got sitting there. So therefore, we have to tell the linker where to put our code in memory. And that's what happens here. If we use the default script that Microchip provides us, it would potentially make use of that boot flash space and therefore overwrite our, uh, our bootloader code. So we don't want that. And then here, this other thing is minus map out.map equals out.map. So what we're going to create is an, a map file. And we'll learn more about this later. But the map file has lots of information for us about where our code and data was actually stored uh, in virtual memory, if we want to examine it later. Now, the output of this step is this out.elf file. And this file is likely to be hundreds of kilobytes long with lots of information, including essentially the executable but lots of other information that might be useful for you to look at later. But if we want just the executable to put onto our PIC32, we have to do one more step that looks like this, XC32 bin2 hex. So it's going to take the binary, the ELF file, and change it to hex. And then as input, it takes the out.elf file, and it's going to create a file called out.hex. And out.hex is the stripped down file, maybe just a few kilobytes which is the one that you actually load onto your PIC32, the executable file. 